Hola Sanchi nerds, and welcome to Sanchi Nearing. Like sugar that contains one-fifth water by mass is con- Hold up, hold up. I know what you're thinking. What a huge wall of text. Before you click away from the video, I really encourage you to read this problem by yourself. Try it out on a piece of paper and see what you get. If you get stuck, try your best to really crunch the numbers by yourself and then look at the video. That's one of the best ways to learn. Taking a basis of 100 kg feed, calculate the mass fraction of water in the wet sugar leaving the evaporator and the ratio of water vaporized with respect to wet sugar leaving the evaporator. Assuming you give it a go for yourself, I'm going to start by labeling the evaporator in our system diagram. It has one inflow that represents wet sugar and it's vaporized, so I'm going to have two outflows. Some water is vaporized, so this stream represents the gas phase water. We're assuming this stream to be pure water, and we're going to label this for water vapor. And the bottom stream represents dry sugar. We're assuming this stream is mostly dry, but there is still some water. And we're labeling the stream as dry sugar. Now what we can do is break it down. Fill in what you do know now. From the definition of mass fraction, we can begin to label these streams. So for the wet sugar, it contains one-fifth water by mass. And taking the basis of 100 kg feed, we can label this stream as M1 is 100 kg for the wet sugar, and the mass fraction is 20%. So its corresponding mass fraction for solids is 80%. We don't know the second stream, but we can label it as M2. And since we assume this stream is pure water, this is 100%. 85% of the water is vaporized, so we can use that as a mini equation for our calculation. We can label this equation as 85% of the first stream. And for the third stream, we don't know that either, but we can label the mass fraction of water in the third stream. Now, we have to calculate the mass fraction of water in the wet sugar leaving the evaporator. So if you haven't got this far, pause and try it by yourself again. The first thing we can do is solve for the mass of the water in the second stream using the variables. Plugging in the variables, we have the mass fraction of water in the first stream times the mass of the first stream. Or just to be clear, we can write it as one large equation as such. This gives us an answer of 17 kilograms of water. The next, we, the next thing we can do is the overall mass balance. When in doubt, n equals out. Adding up the streams, we have M1 is equal to M2 plus M3. And we can replace the variables for our calculation. Since we solved M2 to be 17, we can plug this into our overall mass balance equation and get an answer of 83 kilograms. Next, we can do the same thing for the sugar mass balance. When in doubt, N equals out. This gives us this equation. Note that this is the same amount of sugar in both the feed and the product, n equals out. Now we can plug in our previous calculation, and we get an answer of the mass fraction of sugar in the bottom stream to be 0.963. And we can do a whole other mass balance on water, or just recall the definition of mass fraction. So we can just subtract 1 from this answer to get about 3.6%. Uh, now we have to answer the question by taking the ratio of the kilograms of water vaporized with respect to kilograms of wet sugar leaving the system, which is going to be mass 2 over mass 3. This gives us an answer of about 0.204. These are our answers. A note on the wording of the question. The definition of the ratio is the kilograms of water vaporized with respect to kilograms of wet sugar leaving the evaporator. It says wet sugar, but I called it dry sugar, and it really is the dried sugar that is leaving the evaporator. So don't go calculating the wet sugar entering the system. It really means the wet sugar in the bottom stream, stream three. So be really careful with these types of wordings because they can really get you on exams when you're under time pressure. Now that we solve those, we can replace this in our system diagram. And we're done with part A. We can go ahead and cross this entire thing out, which means we're on part B. If a thousand tons per day of wet sugar is fed to the evaporator, how much additional water must be removed from the outlet sugar to dry it completely? And what annual revenue can be expected if dry sugar sells for 15 cents a pound? Again, try it by yourself before continuing. 
Assuming you gave that a go, we have the overall mass balance, just like before, 1000 equals m.2 plus m.3. And we have the sugar mass balance, which is going to be the mass fractions and the masses. Replacing that for a calculation, we can solve for m.3 to be about 830 tons per day. So how much more water do we need to evaporate? We need to calculate the mass flow rate of the water in the third stream. This gives us about 30 tons of water per day. There's another way of answering this question. We could say, for part A we said that 100 kilograms corresponds to the mass fraction of water in the third stream to be about 3 kilograms of water. Now we need to solve for the mass flow rate of stream 3 such that we have the mass flow rate of stream 1 to be 1000 tons per day. So we can write a ratio as such of taking the mass fraction of water with respect to the mass fraction of the first stream. Plugging in our numbers, we can solve for the same exact value. Now to sell at 15 cents per pound annually of dry sugar, we need... So we convert the value of the third stream, and using some reunit conversions, we get about 87 million dollars per year. And now we're done with part B. For part C, we have the evaporator is built to achieve the production rate of part B installed, st started up, and the water content of the partially dried sugar is measured on successive days of operation. The results follow. In subsequent runs, the evaporator is to be shut down for maintenance if it falls more than three standard deviations from the mean of the series of runs. Calculate the endpoints of this range, and considering the results of part A and C together, what can you conclude about the recently installed evaporator? Well, I know I really haven't talked much about stats yet, so let's start by using Excel to plot the data, and I'll go over the concepts in detail. If you don't care about stats, then you're done with this problem, but I recommend you try it out anyway just because we're going to use these concepts for sure in other classes in the future, and probably the rest of our lives. The first thing you want to do is input all your data in Excel. This is just the given data and we're going to have to calculate all these different things. So to plot it, you're going to highlight these two columns, go to insert, click this for a scatter plot. And you can play around with the design of the figure by double clicking it, clicking on the data, changing the color of the markers. changing the text font or you can download the data in the description and change it as a template which I've moved to this plot here so here's the given data set that I plotted now I'm going to do a really quick crash course of the relevant statistics for this data set. Our task is to solve for the standard deviation of the data and see if our mean lies within three standard deviations of the set. The so standard deviation is this funky looking equation where n is the number of data points and xi is the sample measurement and x bar is the sample mean. So the sample measurement is simply just the data points and the mean as we may know is just dividing by the total number and just taking the sum of each of the data points. So I'll show you how to do that on Excel now. So the first thing we have to do is calculate the mean. So we're gonna write equals, take one divided by the total number of samples, which is 10, times the summation of all of the data points. So I'm gonna take sum, not for the days, but for the actual data. Click here and drag, close this, enter, and that's our mean. And that's this equation. The next thing we have to do is calculate the square difference for our standard deviation. So we can do this by writing equals, parentheses, first data point minus the mean, because that's this part of the variable of the equation, and then square that. And we would have to repeat that for every single data point, or I'll show you a little trick. You can change this and put a dollar sign to keep this value constant. Hit enter, and then double click this plus. 
So these are all the square differences. Now we can calculate the standard deviation from this equation by writing equals times sqrt for square root parentheses 1 over 9 times the summation of the difference of the squares. Highlight, click and drag, close this, enter. And we can check that Excel also has its own version of standard deviation. We got stdv, stdev dot s, and then highlight these guys, and it should be the same thing, which it is. Now we calculate three times that because we need to calculate three standard deviations according to the problem, which is this. Now to calculate the upper limit, we add the mean plus the standard deviation, and the lower limit is the mean minus the standard deviation. So we calculated the standard deviation to be 1.13 times 10 to the negative 3 and the mean to be 0 0.05036. Now it says the evaporator is to be shut down for maintenance if it falls more than 3 standard deviations from the mean. So that means the endpoints become 0 0.05036 or plus or minus the standard deviation, which you calculate the upper limit to be 0 0.0521 and the lower limit to be 0 0.0486. But the problem is... We calculated the mass fraction of water in the drain stream to be 0 0.0306, which is lower than the lower limit. The first thing to do is when you see a big problem like this is break it down and make sure you really understand what the system diagram looks like. The next thing to do is use the conservation of mass to write and solve your mass balance. Be careful with those careless and pesky mistakes, especially on your calculator. When in doubt, n equals out. And then we use statistics to analyze the results. We learned the definition for standard deviation and the mean, and we used Excel to answer our questions. Remember, always try the solution by yourself, and try to teach others too, because that's a really good way to learn and practice. Don't forget to check out my social media, and click the links in the description for any resources I have. And don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.